How's it going guys? Your boy Joxel here with a quick buying guide on what to look for for a laptop in 2016. Everybody's pretty much getting new laptops now, not that college semester's about starting up and high school starting and everything. So um, I wanted to create this video because I work in an electronics store and the constant question everybody asks me is what should I look for when buying a laptop. So this is, video is meant to be a quick kind of guideline, it's not a rule set, just kind of like a, a guide sheet for you to know what to look for when you're buying your next laptop. Four main specs that you want to keep your eye out for. Processor. Processor, essentially, everybody knows, is basically the brain of the computer. That controls the speed at which you do normal computing things like opening a program or to turning a web page into pictures and such and such. Second thing you want to look for is RAM. RAM covers your multitasking capability, so having much of Windows open up, having multiple programs running in the background, things like that. Third thing you want to look for is your storage. Storage is basically where you save all your documents, your photos, your videos, anything you install. This, that's all going to factor into your hard drive space. So the more space you have, the more things you can save. But that also will change depending on what you're looking for in your laptop. Fourth thing you really want to look for is kind of your display. Not everybody really thinks about it and some people kind of forget, but display can make a big difference depending again on what you plan on using your laptop for. But we'll go over that later on in the video. Also, keep an idea that size is also a personal preference. I was going to include that in there, but it kind of changes depending on what everyone is looking for and what your personal preference is about how big of a screen you want or how heavy your laptop will be. Okay, so for those of you who are looking for a laptop for school, basically just to do word processing, checking your email, and accessing like web-based programs and other websites, you don't really need a really powerful computer, and generally you're not trying to spend a lot of money on one either. For school work, you would only need a processor between a Celeron and an i3. So you have three lower end processors that are available on the market right now. Intel Celeron, Intel Pentium, and Intel i3 in that order. Basically these processors or these brains for these computers aren't meant to handle a lot, but they do with a, they can perform a single task really well and pretty efficiently. So when it comes to these Chromebooks or these smaller end laptops, being able to perform basic tasks like opening Word and accessing your email and submitting a document, they can do that well. The only time they start to falter is when you start ha running heavier programs or doing more multitasking than it's actually made for. Also when it comes to RAM, since you're not doing a lot on the computer at once, you're typically going to be focusing on a single task, you don't need a lot of RAM. So you can s sit between 2 gigabytes and 4 gigabytes depending again on how much multitasking you plan on doing. Chromebooks nowadays will typically only have about two to four gigabytes of RAM because again they're not meant to handle a lot of things at one time but rather to focus on a single task and to perform it well. Lastly with your storage on these lower end laptops you don't need a lot of storage typically because a lot of people now are switching to cloud based services like Google Docs and um, accessing uh, web portals through their college to submit either assignments or store assignments and everybody's switching to cloud based storage. so. With that, you don't actually need a lot of physical storage space in a laptop. So you can get by with anything between 16 gigabytes up to like 64. But if you want to have more space, you can always go up to about a terabyte, which is the average now. Most computers will come with a terabyte of hard drive space if you want to have just more room to save your stuff physically on a drive rather than in the cloud. A couple computers that would fit in this category well would be Chromebooks. Chromebooks are kind of new to the market. They've only been around for about a couple years, but they are very attractive to the average student, being someone who is simply trying to do their work processing and uh, complete, completing assignments. So a couple that come to mind would be the Acer Chromebook 11, which has been really popular recently. So this Acer Chromebook sports a Celeron processor and a whopping 2 gigabytes of RAM and it has two, 16 gigabytes of solid state drive uh, memory. When it comes to storage space, there's two things you need to keep an eye out for because you have two types of hard drives now. You have a hard disk drive, which is pretty much what every computer made within the last 20 to 30 years has, or you have your solid state drive, which is also fairly new to the market. The difference between the two is the hard disk drive is a mechanical drive. Essentially, it's a, like a record player, a disc that spins on a needle and saves your memory. The only problem with these mechanical drives is that over time, they eventually start to slow down from normal wear and tear, dust getting into it, or physical damage. And uh, also, eventually, they're a little bit more prone to breaking. To counter this, they've created a new type of hard drive, and it's known as a solid state drive. A solid state drive is all chip now, so it's, a lot, it's all digital. The benefits to a solid state drive is typically up to three times faster than your average hard disk drive. Reason being is because instead of it being a mechanical moving part, since it's all electronic, it's going to travel a lot faster and read and write speeds will be a lot, will be a lot faster as well. 
The downside of having a solid state drive is that you're shrinking capacity for maximizing speed. So you dip, typically when you see a solid state drive or SSD in your spec sheet on a computer, they only range between 128 gigabytes, usually up to about 512 on the more expensive laptops. Granted, while you can get solid state drives with a terabyte and two terabytes of storage space, they tend to be kind of more expensive than worth it. So usually 128 gigs to 256 is typically what the average person will make a good use out of without spending more than they actually need. Chromebooks have a minimum operating system known as Chrome OS. Essentially, it runs almost like a tablet. It's, the, it's not a full operating system like Windows 10 and you're restricted to certain applications that are only available in the Google Store. Now granted, when it comes to being a student, this is not much of a problem since your Microsoft Office software as well as your Google Docs are all accessible through this. It's just that you won't have the full extent and capability of a normal laptop in terms of installing third-party programs and anything else you may want to. For those of you who are looking for a computer, maybe it's for, like, for work or doing more than just the average web browsing and occasional word processing, you may be looking for something a little more powerful to get the desired performance you're looking for. So what I recommend for someone who wants a little bit more of a, a capable laptop would be a laptop that has an, a processor that ranges between either an Intel i3 to an Intel i5. These processors are a little bit more modern and they're more geared toward the multitasking that most people do now. So like again, having multiple web pages open, having multiple programs running in the background, these processors are able to handle that a lot better. Average laptop now will have between 6 to 8 gigabytes of RAM. Personally, I won't ever use anything less than 8 gigabytes anymore because I tend to have a lot of open web pages and uh, a lot of different programs running at one time. So 8 gigabytes of RAM is a really good standard in terms of being able to multitask effectively without having to worry about your computer slowing down. I don't really recommend going in anything above 8 gigabytes if you're just doing, you know, basic computing or not doing much with your laptop because after 8 gigabytes even if you add more a lot of computers will come with 12 and 16 and 32 you won't notice it so it's not really worth your money to spend more money on a computer that has more RAM that you're not even going to utilize I also recommend a solid state drive again solid state drives are going to be a lot faster than hard disk drives it's going to increase your startup and shutdown speeds and your regular read and write speeds when it comes to copying and pasting folders and data and other things like that. Now granted this is again just a guideline and not a rigid rule set of what you should look for. So when going with a hard drive you can still go with a hard disk drive and those will give you more space usually up to a terabyte to two terabytes. Um, just understand that over time you will experience a slowdown with that and they won't perform as quickly or start up, start up and shut down as quickly as a solid state drive would. Now some computers come with both, so if you want to have one that comes with both a hard disk drive and a solid state drive, that's good as well because it gives you the benefit of the solid state drive in terms of speed, but it gives you the storage space as well in terms of having your capacity. So if you find a computer that has both and you can afford to spend a little bit of extra money to get both, it's definitely worthwhile to do so. One computer that fits this category fairly well is the HP Pavilion 13 inch. Uh, of course, all the links to the computers that I'll be speaking of will be in the description, so make sure you check those out. The HP Pavilion actually comes with an Intel Core i5 processor, 8GB of RAM, and 128GB solid state drive. This HP laptop gives you solid performance, plenty of multitasking capability, and enough storage space to allow you to save a good amount of documents and photos and music, um, but without having to sacrifice the speed with going with a hard disk drive. Lastly, the last category I would fit the average laptop buyer into is someone who does gaming or other hobbies. Now, I will be making a future video for specific, specifically for gaming laptops, and when I eventually, when I do end up making that video, I'll put the link here in the description, um, or I'll just link it into the video. For those of you who are looking to game, do light gaming, uh, maybe video editing or other hobbies like photo editing or just or programming or rendering of any sort You're gonna need a little bit higher specs in terms of what you look for in your computer in terms of your processor I'd recommend at least an Intel Core i5 or up to an i7 if you can afford the extra change The reason why is because when with the sixth generation i5 and i7 It gives you a lot more multitasking capability again, but a lot better processing speed and these processors are more tuned to handling the bigger programs that you may be using Again, 8 gigabytes of RAM is a pretty good standard. I actually render my videos with 8 gigabytes of RAM and it performs very well. However, it definitely doesn't hurt to go up to 16 and 32 gigabytes of RAM, again, if you're doing rendering or 3D modeling or photo editing or things of that nature. Lastly, I highly suggest, again, a solid state drive. 
128 gigabytes may not be enough, especially if you're gonna be saving a lot of videos or higher capacity content. So I recommend anywhere from 256 to 512 or more if you can afford it. Lastly, especially if you're gonna be rendering videos or even doing like gaming, you wanna look for a dedicated graphics card. Now again, in a later video, I'll go into depth about the difference between different model graphics cards, uh, but a good thing to look for would be any computer that'll come with an NVIDIA uh, graphics card, usually a GTX 8 series or later. Reason why I say that is because if you're doing any type of gaming, uh, anything before the 8 series is getting ready to be obsolete. So if you wanna be able to game at a consistent quality with a consistent frame weight, then a uh, 8 series, GTX 8 series, like a GTX 860 or a 940, uh, or higher would be better in your interest but also the dedicated graphics card will give you a lot more speed and a lot more rendering power when it comes to generating 3d content or rendering video or editing uh, rendering edited photos to allow you to complete those tasks a lot faster uh, again without slow down on your computer one good example of a computer that fits into this category is an HP Omen 15 inch uh, this laptop sports an Intel Core i7 processor with 8 gigabytes of memory and an NVIDIA GeForce 960M graphics card. It also has the two hard drives that I was talking about earlier. It has both a 1TB hard disk drive as well as a 128GB solid state drive which is going to give you that performance in terms of speed when starting up and shutting down your computer and installing and writing programs and everything um, without sacrificing that space because it has both those hard drives in there. That NVIDIA GeForce graphics card is going to be pretty nice when it comes to running your video and it's pretty decent for light gaming. Now granted, you're not going to be able to run every game at max frames per second with max excellent quality. It'll give you enough performance to do some light gaming and to play most games that you're looking for. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick guide. Again, this is not a rule set. This is just my personal guidelines of what to look for in 2016. This may change next year because you never know what type of processors and what new hard drives and stuff they might come up with next or what type of programs they may come out with. Hopefully this kind of clears the fog in terms of what you should know and what you shouldn't, or what you should pay for and what you shouldn't in terms of finding a laptop that's right for your lifestyle. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know how you like the video, if you wanna see more videos like this, or if you'd rather me do something different. Give me some feedback, it's all well and open. Take care.